Good morning, yogis. Welcome to your Monday morning deep stretch. I'm Angie with Harmony Yoga, and we'll be working on myofascial release today. Myofascial release, what is it? Well, it, it, there's several different things you can use for myofascial release. You can use balls. You can use foam rolling. You can even use blocks. There's a lot of different things you can use to do that. So while I go ahead and continue on describing the class today, go ahead and see if you can find some of those things in your house. So a tennis ball, a golf ball. If you have a foam roller, that's kind of ideal because that will be the theme of the class today. So if you don't have those things, maybe in time you'll add those to your collection. You can always come back to this. This will be on YouTube and you can always come back and do this again with me another time. Otherwise, just sit and enjoy as we mow and groan and swear right out, releasing our bodies. So with myofascial release, we're actually rolling deep into the muscle tissue. So this helps to create um, improvement in the, the lymphatic, lymphatic system, also moving into the circulatory system, so creating better blood flow and circulation throughout the body. Why that's good for our bodies? If you have pain in your shoulders, knees, hips, any parts of your body, there's lack of circulation. With lack of circulation, it can create pain. So by rolling it out, we're helping to increase the blood flow into those areas and decreasing inflammation and pain in the body. So it kind of contradicts what we're doing today because as you start rolling, some areas feel so amazing and other areas are downright almost painful. So this is one of the exceptions I would say with yoga that this does get into a pain of very strong awareness, even moving into some pain. So if it's too intense for you today, I want you to back off. Less is more with this. If you've never rolled before, it's very important to just take it slow. It does really help to release your body. Things to consider also before rolling, have good hydration before, during, and after class and throughout the day. So making sure you're well hydrated because this really does get your body flowing, get things moving through the body. And as we move things through the body, we want to stay hydrated. So very important to stay hydrated. All right. So once you have those things you need, we'll go ahead and get started. We're actually going to start today's class on the roller, on our spine. Now, things that you could do instead of using a roller um, for lying down would be taking a blanket, if you have a lap blanket, an Indian blanket, yoga blanket, something like that. You can take it and roll it up really tight, and then you can use that to lie on just to get the same side kind of sensation in your body as lying on the roller. So a little bit different. And you can become creative and maybe even using a rolled blanket tightly. You can also use a rolled yoga mat rolled really tightly. That can also be used for myofascial release. So as you're moving through this class at your home studio, you'll have to improvise and try to use the things that you can to make this work for you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So coming to the end of your roller and bring us, it goes all the way to the end of the roller and you'll just begin to walk yourself all the way down. And if you've never done this before, this might feel a little bit odd or different. So try to get used to the sensation. Counter indicators for this would be if you've had any spinal surgery, any compressed disc, bulge disc, anything that creates pain in your spine. This may not be the best um, posture for you to come into. So I want to make sure that you're listening to your body and coming into a safe practice today. Once you come into that space, you can place your hand underneath the lumbar spine. You'll feel a natural curve where the spine begins to to create that natural curve. And you can also bring your hand up to the cervical spine. So two places in the spine where you have a natural curve, and this helps to accentuate the natural curvatures of the spine. So you'll feel a little bit more pressure on the thoracic spine, maybe a little bit more pressure on the tailbone. So again, try to come into a practice that feels about right for you. As you come into this space, maybe finding that you're a little bit wobbly on the roller. So if you need to place your arms alongside your body for support, you can go ahead and do that. And as you begin to get comfortable with the roll, you might find that you want to bring your hands up onto your chest or any other part of your body. So I want you to find that sense of ease in your body. Once you've moved into that space, begin to allow the eyes to soften and close. Closing off outside distractions and beginning to draw your awareness inward. First and foremost, we observe the spine. So having that slight pressure on the spine brings more awareness into our spine. As we breathe today, I want you to first find natural breath in your body and just begin to get acclimated with your breathing today. So just noticing how your breath is moving, not changing your breathing pattern, just breathing in and out naturally. As you become more acquainted with your breath, I want you to begin to allow the breath to slow and deepen. Let it move deeper into the base of the lungs. And you can even place your hands on your lower abdominals 
As you inhale, feel expansion of lungs from side to side, front to back, top to bottom. Draw the breath upward in the spine, and in this space, you can really feel the direct movement of breath as it travels the length of the spine. Breathe up to the heart space. Love, kindness, and compassion for yourself and others. And as you release the breath, either audibly or silently, let it go. Again, we'll take another nice big round of breath, expanding from side to side, front to back, and top to bottom. Drawing the breath upward through the length of the spine, maybe in the heart space, maybe going just beyond, maybe reaching the base of the throat. Pausing here once again for a bit of breath retention. And again, audibly or silently, release the breath, let it go. So we're going to move through a few rounds of deeper belly breathing. And why do we belly breathe? Belly breathing is really good for allowing you to move with your parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. So letting us calm the body, calm the mind. Let the body ease into this space. So just focusing on the content and the quality of your breath at this moment. We've got about five more rounds of breath here. Just becoming, we come into this space. And know that as we move through the class, if for any reason you need to come out of any pose, know that you can always come out at any time. Last three, last two, and last breath. Maybe you have a little bit more balance on this roll. You can begin to bring palm to palm compression at heart space. Palms can be pointed up or toward the body. I kind of like my palms pointing upward. If you'd like to set an intention for this practice, for your day, for the week, now's an opportunity to do so. And an intention is anything meaningful to you that allows your mind to stay focused. It allows you to maintain your practice and to stay in the present moment. As these words begin to form in your mind, they create an intention. We'll take one more big breath here, drawing in the power and the positivity of your attention. And as you release the breath, you can bring the arms up overhead and then just let them cascade down to your side. We'll go ahead and roll off the roller. And we'll go ahead and set that roller to the side for now. We're going to come into a full body stretch by extending the arms up overhead, reaching long with the fingers and the toes and really opening up the entire body. So I really, really like good morning stretches. I do them a lot in classes just because it gives such an opening of the entire body. We'll take one more big, beautiful breath here and as you exhale, draw the knees into the body and create just a little bit of movement. So if your spine was in that space, you can kind of release a little bit, letting some side to side motion, maybe front to back and just letting your body release. Maybe stand a leg or two out, just kind of letting your body have some solidity. And go ahead and release. We're going to go ahead and take that roller now. I'm going to place it underneath the head up. Go ahead and come back down onto your back. And let your head and neck just naturally drape the roller. We'll start here and just find some awareness in your body. And then in time, you can begin to have a side-to-side -side motion of the head and neck. So the side-to-side -side motion brings awareness into those small muscles that support the head and neck. And as you have the side-to-side -side motion, you might find some areas of sensitivity that pop up that you may not know existed. If it feels good, you can pause in one of those spaces and apply as much pressure as you need, and then continue on with fluid motion. Now I want you to find your practice today. So your practice might be one of holding and applying pressure or it might be one of fluid movement or a combination of both. So wherever your body takes you today, go ahead and let the mind be still and just let your body go where it needs to go today. We've got about five more rounds of breath here. Now you can certainly stay longer than five breaths if this is feeling really good. Last three. Last two. And last one, we'll go ahead and bring it back to center and pause for just a moment. And then we'll begin to move into the next space, moving into the upper thoracic spine. So the upper thoracic spine is about mid-back all the way up. And as you roll, I want you to be mindful to stay away from the free-flowing ribs that are just below that point. Now again, it's your practice that feels good to you. You can certainly go where you need to go, but just words of caution as you move into this practice. Other things to note about mild fascial release is as you move into different areas of the body, some will feel amazing. Some will feel quite intense. 
So as you come into those different spaces in your body, know that bruising is unlikely, but it can happen. So again, if something is feeling way too intense, go ahead and back off and then take a pause and you can join the class again when you're ready. So again, finding your practice. As you continue to roll out through the upper thoracic spine, you'll move into the scapula, the shoulder blades. And you might find that even draping over the roller feels really good. So you can even come into a back bend here. I just got a little bit of articulation in my spine. It feels really good. And again, you can come into what feels good. We've got about five more rounds of breath here. Last three. Last two. And last breath. Let's go ahead and bring it back to center. And then we begin to roll underneath the armpits. So as you roll underneath the armpits, many women have had different types of procedures, some um, breast reduction or breast enhancement, scar tissue, things can happen in that area. So as you roll underneath the armpit, be aware that you are breaking, if you have had surgeries, you can break up some of that scar tissue, which is really good for the body, but be mindful, go slow, and if it is intense, back off. Okay, that being said, let's go ahead and bring the roller underneath the armpit. So you can just stay here and drape yourself over the roller. You can have very small movement here as you get underneath the armpit. You'll find you'll get into those small little looks and crannies. And this is an area that doesn't always necessarily get this kind of attention. So it can be, like I said, very intense. So find the level of intensity that you need. And hang out here for just a few more rounds of breath. And take it down more into the mammary glands. You can come down into the lats a little bit more. So again, finding those spaces that feel really good to you. Got about three more rounds of breath here. Last two. And last one. Let's go ahead and rotate to the other side. And again, just allowing your body to drape over the roller. So bringing that roller right underneath the armpit. You can pause here and just let your body drape naturally over the roller, applying gentle pressure or intense pressure where you need it. And then you can find that fluid motion if that feels good. And you find those little areas underneath the armpit you never knew existed. You can take it into the mammary glands a little bit more. And know that as you move through this class today, if you do have areas that might have scar tissue, this is good for breaking up the scar tissue, but do less time in those areas. So you want to make sure that you're feeling good after this, not feeling achy. And water does help with that, so stay well hydrated. We've got about three more rounds of breath on this side. Last three, last two, and last breath. Let's go ahead and release. We're going to come back into that rolling position on the upper thoracic spine because sometimes once you get underneath the arms, it's, it can be really amazing how much that opens up through the upper back. So we're just going to roll out for about five rounds of breath here. Last three, last two, and last breath. Let's go ahead and come into an upright position. We're going to go ahead and begin to come onto our roller. And we're going to come to seated on the roller. Now, if you do have a tender tailbone or this just, again, some of these different positions can feel kind of awkward or different in the body if you've never rolled before. So just take your time. When your body says, I've had enough, you've had enough. You can come off and join us again when you're ready. So you can just come to seated. You can release your hands behind your body. You can roll from side to side. So kind of finding those spaces that feel good to you. Um, maybe not so good, but again, take your time, breathe into your body as you're doing this. So sometimes as you get into those intense areas, the tendency is to maybe hold the breath. Don't hold the breath. Really let your breath continue through this practice. So keeping the breath fluid with the body. And we've got about five more rounds of breath here. Last three, last two, and last breath. So coming into the IT band. So again, 
This is an area, if you have it, this is still pretty okay so far. As you come into the IT band, you're going to really understand why I say moan, burn, and swear it out. Now, if you are in a room where it's just you, you can certainly let the F bombs fly if you need to. Otherwise, if you have people around, keep letting your body release, but maybe modify that to a PG 13 if you need to. So we'll start with the bottom leg extended out. We'll cross the top leg over, and you'll roll from the hip joint all the way down to just above the knee. And as you come into this, this is where it feels like you're, you're really going to maybe break your body. So this is quite intense. So again, as you come into this, if you need to verbalize, that's a very important part of this practice. So allow your body to release. So remember that in your muscles, there's not just muscular tissue. We also hold emotion in our body. So I've experienced before in class where I've even been in a class. And I've had, I've seen other students just break into hysterical tears and they're not even sure why they're crying. And that's just because you're getting into your body in a way that you may never normally get into it. So yoga has those really nice ways to really get deep in the muscles and really let all that stuff out. So there's no need to hold on to that stuff. It's just keeping our bodies heavy and weighted down. We want to feel lighter, brighter, and more free with ourselves. We've got about three more rounds of breath here, and if you've had more than enough, you can certainly begin to move to the other side. Last three, last two, and last one. Let's go ahead and begin to rotate now to the other side. So, coming to the other side, extend the bottom leg out, cross the top leg over, and again, we roll from the hip all the way down to just above the knee. So, Noticing the differences between those two different sides and finding those oh yeah spaces. When you find those spaces, don't hold it in. Let your breath out. If you need to say a word or two or three or more, you can certainly do that. So this is your practice. Don't judge yourself. Oh man, I haven't rolled for a while, but this does feel hurt so good. And we've got about five more rounds of breath here. Last three, last two, and last one. We're done with that part of it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and roll out the quads now. For those of you that run, hike, walk, or any of all the above, this is another nice way to really release the quads. So we don't want those muscles to be all tight and rigid. We want them to feel loose and open. So we're gonna be working on that right now. So go ahead and begin to come onto your roller. You can drop down to your forearms. You can place the palms together in prayer position because sometimes you're praying that this is going to be over, but sometimes you're praying that this feels so good, I don't know. And then this will begin to roll forward and backward, and you can begin to alternate internal and external rotation with the leg. Sometimes it gets into that muscle tissue a little bit more. We're gonna hang out in this spot for just a little bit. So really getting very, very comfortable with your roller. And just that forward and back motion. If you find an area that's extra tense or tight, you can pause here and apply as much pressure as you need to release it. So fluid movement, holding, combination of both, just really finding that space to let your body release it out. Again, we've got about five rounds of breath here. Last three, last two, and last breath. Let's go ahead and come off that roller. And we're gonna come into the abductors and the adductors. So we're gonna place our roller lengthwise with the mat. You lay on your side and go ahead and drape your top leg over the roller. You can bend the elbow and support the head and neck. We'll start with the roller on right about at the knee on the inside, and then you're just gonna to begin to guide the roller into the inner groin. So coming in there and apply as much pressure as you need. And again, just begin to get acquainted with this motion, coming into spaces that may not get this kind of attention always. So again, we're getting very intimately connected to our roller. So that's just part of this practice. And we've got a few rounds of breath here just to roll out the inner line of the leg, getting into the groin, the abductors, the adductors. And 
and we've got about three, two, and one. Let's go ahead and release, and we'll bring this to the other side. Lying on your side, draping the top leg over, supporting the head and neck as you need to. We'll start with the roller at the knee and begin to roll it down to the inner groin. And then you can just find the motion that feels good to you. And as you have these different, work through these different spaces in the body, for some you might find you want to stay a little longer, for others you want to move on. So once you have the basic technique to getting in there with the myofascial release, you can always do this anytime at home. Sometimes you maybe just want to target tone one area, so that's perfectly fine too. We're doing full body today because I think we need it. And we've got about five rounds of breath here. Last three, last two, and last breath. And we'll go ahead and release. We're going to go ahead and come into a seated position. And then we're going to begin to bring the roller underneath the calf muscles. And we're just going to start here, putting the roller underneath the ankles. We're going to hang out here. Just imagine you're chilling. Let your feet rotate from side to side or front to back. So just another day, chilling. No, nothing else to do, unfortunately. And then we'll begin to flex to the feet by drawing the toes toward the body and the legs. So getting just a little bit of awareness behind the ankles. Once you've done this for a couple of rounds, then go ahead and begin to roll out through the calf muscles. And again, another intense area is for people that are walkers, runners, hikers. This can get intense too. So let's just go ahead and start. You can just walk the roller up and down the legs. Or you can raise the sit bones up and you can begin to roll it out. So rolling from the ankles, I'm going to bring this back just a bit, to the calf muscles. So we're getting an arm workout too. Now, if this doesn't feel quite intense enough, you can cross one leg over the other and supplies more direct pressure into that specific muscle group. Make sure to give that love to both sides. And we've got about five more rounds of breath. Last three, last two, and last breath. We'll go ahead and release, and we'll set the roller to the side. Another nice thing you can do with the roller, if you have a windowsill or something you can grab onto on the wall, you can actually stand on your roller and roll out the feet, which feels really good. Instead of doing that today, we're actually going to be using the ball to roll out the feet. So we'll do that in just a moment. We're going to go ahead and come onto our mat in table position. And as you come into table position, wrists directly underneath the shoulders, knees about hip distance apart, directly underneath the hips. So take a moment or two and just stretch a leg or two back. So kind of coming into a little bit of release. So we've taken some time to roll through our body, so we've really released a lot. The blood is circulating, the lymph glands are stimulated, moving waste out of the body. So we're just going to keep this goodness going by creating just a little bit of movement to let the body release a little bit more. So coming into some spinal movement here, we come into cat and cow. As you inhale, inhale to the lower abdominals and send the breath all the way up through the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Begin to hollow out the belly as you gaze down toward the mat. Pause here. And then with the next inhale, direct the chest through the gate of the shoulders. Head and neck move with the spine, belly releases toward the earth. And then go ahead and move between cat and cow. Hanging out in any one of those positions as long as you need to. Beginning to feel the articulation of the spine. And then as you breathe in and out of these different postures, I want you to imagine the breath traveling the length of the spine. So really find that beautiful articulation of the spine. After you've moved through a few rounds of cat and cow, if you want to add any other kind of movement, you can come into some C curves. You can come into some hip glides, which feel pretty good. You can come into some hip circles. This is Jason just moving around, releasing. So doing a couple of movements here. 
and you can come into also barrel rolls or anything else. So really finding that movement, that freedom to move with your body. We've got about five more rounds of breath here, just finding that fluid movement. Last three, last two, and last one. Great job, everyone. You're doing so awesome. Let's keep this goodness going. We're going to go ahead and release through the wrists and the feet next. So we've released a lot through the body. This is just going to really complement the rest, the rest of this practice. So we're going to release through the wrists. We're going to begin to walk the fingertips back toward the body and slowly release the heels, the hand down. So really getting a nice release. Now, if you don't have as much mobility in the wrist, you can bring the wrist out to the side or a diagonal. So again, we're progressive with our yoga practice. You start in one place and you work and you practice until you get to the spaces that you need to. And that's just a matter of progression. If you don't feel the level of intensity you need, you can begin to release the hips back toward the heels. This will take this beautiful stretch from the wrist all the way up into the forearm. So again, find that level of depth that you need today. And release, we'll bring it back to center. Counter stretch for this, we'll do this one at a time, starting with the wrist, the right hand, reaching the fingertips back toward the body, and releasing the top of that hand to the mat. Fingers are spread nice and wide, and you're slowly releasing the nail beds into your mat. Again, if you don't find a level of intensity you need, you can begin to draw the body back, the hips back toward the heels. So again, finding a level of intensity you need. One more breath here and release. And we'll do the same thing with the left hand. Fingers are spread nice and wide, slowly releasing the top of the hand to the mat. Let those nail beds release and create some spaces in between the fingers. And release it out, good. We're gonna go ahead and tuck the toes a whole bunch and we're going to walk our hips back to sitting on the heels. So we're really opening up through the feet, the soles of the feet. You can even reach your hands back and spread those toes nice and wide. So we really want to take full advantage of this. Now, if you come into this space and it's just too intense, you can certainly come into a kneeling position. That's also okay. So again, about finding that just right balance for your practice. We're going to hang out here for a while. Again, it gets a little bit of intense. But again, as you work through this type of a practice, you'll become, you'll be finding that more and more you have, you can have longer holding times and your body releases quite a bit more. We're going to begin to inhale the arms out in front, palms face each other. We're going to interlace the palms and direct them away from the body. We're straightening out through the arms, shoulders, releasing. Take one more breath here and then inhale, draw the arms up overhead and as you exhale, then strongly through the elbows, inhale, exhale, press them away. Nice long stretch here. Last three, last two, and last breath, we go ahead and release the end. Then we're going to tap those feet up. Let that release completely. We're going to do a nice counter stretch for that. And this time, the top of the feet stay flat on, on your mat. We're going to walk the hips back to sitting on the heels. Again, another nice, strong stretch here. And again, if this is a part of your practice, you can certainly come into kneeling. So which, wherever you are in your practice, find those right spaces for your body. Again, we're going to hang out here for just a bit. So a really nice release for the ankles, the soles of the feet and breathe. And then we'll go ahead and inhale the arms out in front. Once again, palms face each other. And this time we're going to change the interlace of your palms. So change the interlace of your palms, the one that feels just a bit weird, and then draw your palms away from the body. One more breath here. And then with your next inhale, draw the arms up overhead, bend strongly through the elbows, and then inhale, exhale, press them away. So as you're lengthening through the arms, keep the elbows down. So you're creating lots and lots of space in the body. That opposition of motion as you're Palms reach away from the body. Your shoulder blades are rolling back and down. Got one more breath here. And then likely go ahead and release. Come back to table. And we'll pound out those feet a little bit. We're going to begin to move into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. So we have a little bit more mobility here as we come into Mobile Dog. We start by rolling the fingertips to the palms of the hands. Fingers are spread nice and wide. Lots of spaces in between the fingers. Press the ring and the thumb into your mat and direct the energy up through the arms, engaging the shoulders by rolling them back and down. Tuck your toes, bend your knees, and when you're ready, send those sit bones high for down dog. As we come into do down dog, we come into mobile dog. So this is your opportunity to tread through the feet, to move between plank and dog, to roll through the spine, maybe lift up a leg or two. We've got plenty of time here to let the body ebb and flow. You can even come between child's pose and down dog. So again, finding those different spaces of movement. And then in 
time, I want you to begin to bring this to stillness. Now the heels may not come all the way down. The feet are spread about hip distance apart. Shoulder blades are rolling back and down. So think of widening the spaces in the back. Crown releases toward the earth. Sit bones high to the sky. And then in time, letting those heels slowly release toward the earth. We got about one, two, three more rounds of breath here. Last three. Last two. And last one, we're going to walk our hands back toward our feet as we come into our first forward fold. Go ahead and bring your hands to your shins or your quads. If you're more flexible, you can certainly bring your, your hands to the floor. But oftentimes when you do that, even if you have the flexibility to come all the way down, we tend to round the spine. So I want the spine nice and long. So as you come into the space, bring your gaze down. Think of creating space between the crown and the tailbone. And then imagine the chest drawing through the gate of the shoulders. You're going to really feel the opening of the back line of legs coming into the hamstrings, and you can certainly have a bend to the knees here if you need to. Last three. Last two. And last one. Let's go ahead and take it into full forward fold. So really letting your body melt over your legs. And as you come into the space, you can bend the knees very strongly for more spinal decompression. You can also wrap your hands around the back of your legs. You can walk your hands under your feet for a gorilla. You can also grab onto Ox's elbows and shake your head down, nod your head down. So let those muscles release. So you can try any or all of those or none of those. So coming into that space, we'll take a few more rounds of breath here. Last three, last two, and last breath. Let's go ahead and keep those knees bent as we inhale, drawing the arms up overhead. Palms come together, exhale, release, heart space. So if you went and found a couple of balls, let's go ahead and roll out the feet just a bit. So I'm going to be using a golf ball. If you don't have a golf ball and all you have is a tennis ball, that's perfectly fine. So we're going to go ahead and start with the right foot, and we're going to place that golf ball, tennis ball, or whatever ball you have underneath the big toe knuckle of the right foot. We're just going to roll from side to side. Do that a couple of times, and then bring the ball to the big toe knuckle, roll down the length of the foot to the heel, press, bring it back to center, roll down, press, back to center, third toe down, press, and then continue on all the way down the length of the foot. Once you've done that a few times, we're going to roll out the bottom of the foot, applying as much pressure again as you need to. And again, you'll find those little areas that you may not know existed. And then if you are familiar with acupressure or acupuncture. When you're working with the feet, you're working with pressure points, and along each pressure point is assigned an organ. So as you're going through the entire sole of your foot, you're actually giving your entire body an internal massage. So lots of good stuff happening here today. And then once you've done that a few times, we're gonna go ahead and bring the ball to the ball of the foot. We're gonna extend out those feet, nice and, those toes nice and wide, and wrap. Extend and wrap, extend and wrap. Do and then go ahead and bring the ball to the arch of the foot and press. And begin to bring the ball to the heel of the foot. And again, apply as much pressure as you need. And then we're going to roll it out just a bit. And then we're going to begin to move the ball to the other foot, bringing the ball underneath the big toe knuckle. Roll all the way down from side to side until you see each toe knuckle pop up. So do this a couple of times. And then we'll bring the ball to the big toe knuckle, roll down the length of the foot to the heel and press. Second toe, down the length of the foot and press. Third toe, down the length of the foot and press. And then so on and so on and so on. And then when you've moved through that entire space, go ahead and take the ball and then roll it underneath the sole of the foot. You can find that cadence and pace that works best for you. There's a little area right there. And then we're going to bring the ball back to the ball of the foot, extending those toes out nice and wide and wrap. Extend and wrap. Extend and wrap. Do this a couple more times. And then bringing the ball to the arch of the foot, applying as much pressure as you need. And we bring the ball to the heel of the foot. And again, applying as much pressure as you need. And then go ahead and roll it out. All right, let's go ahead and begin to 
to bring it back down again. So we're going to begin to come down onto our mat. But before we do that, we're just going to take a moment and observe how just rolling out the feet can affect our practice. So just taking a moment here, begin to press evenly between the ball and the heel and draw your toes up, spread them wide, release them down. Draw them up, release them down. Just do this a couple of times. You can feel and recreate the arch of the foot and then go ahead and release the toes down. Heels and toes can be touching or hip distance apart. If you are hip distance apart, draw the toes in slightly. And then pick three shoulder rolls back and down. Let your shoulders melt down your back. Reach the fingertips toward the earth and allow the palms to rotate outward, opening up the heart space. Good. Slight bend to the knees. Inhale, the arms move up overhead. As you exhale, bring it to heart space. From a heart space, inhale up the midline. As you exhale, dive forward, come forward. Ardi Udnasana, half forward fold. Take a pause here. Shoulders roll back and down. You can to find more flexibility, you can bring your toes, your hands further down the leg. Shoulders are rolling back and down. Inhale, exhale, deep and forward fold. Shake your head no, nod your head yes. Couple rounds of breath here. Inhale, half forward fold, and then go ahead and begin to step back into plank pose. Draw the heels away from the body. Go ahead and drop the right knee down. And then begin to rotate to the left side of your mat. Inhale the top arm up overhead. And then begin to bring it along the side of the body. So really opening up for a side body stretch. You can stay here expanding and opening the body or you can begin to bend the knee and the elbow, drawing them together. Inhale, draw together. Exhale, extend it out. Inhale together, exhale, extend. Inhale, draw together, exhale, extend. Inhale, draws together, exhale, extend. We'll do that one more time. The next time you're extended out, go ahead and pause here and then bring it right back to center and we'll rotate to the other side. So coming to face your mat, we'll step back into plank pose, drawing the heels away from the body. This time dropping the left knee down. And as you exhale, rotate to the right side of your mat. Inhale the top arm up overhead. You can stay here or bring the arm alongside the head and neck for a nice Full lengthening of the side body. Stay here once again or draw the elbow and the knee together. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, bend. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, bend. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, bend. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, bend. Yeah. As many times as you need here to really feel that nice opening. And then we'll go ahead and extend it out nice and long and then we'll bring it right back to center. Draw both knees together. Shoulder blades roll back and down, palms rotate outward. Inhale, draw your arms up overhead, and as you exhale, release the hands behind the body, draw the palms together, draw the shoulder blades together straight through the arms. Inhale, bring your gaze up, and as you exhale, come forward in a forward fold. Five rounds of breath here, last three, last two, and last one. We inhale right back to center and release. So we'll go ahead and end the practice today. We're going to go ahead and begin to bring our legs up the wall for you crying. So if you don't have a wall to use, you can certainly just begin to bring your legs up. Um, I'll show the two different variations and you can come into that one. That will be our resting pose to close class today. So when you're ready, first way to do this, if you don't have a wall that you have access to, is just to bend the knees, bring the arms out in front, palms face each other, and lower down with integrity. Once you're here, you begin to release the arms to your side bodies. Inhale, draw the knees in toward the body. And as you exhale, lengthen out to the legs. Press evenly between the ball and the heel. And begin to allow the eyes to soften and close. As you come into this space, you can stay here. Or you can begin to widen through the legs, coming into Uphavista Kanasana, a nice wide open space. So again, you have options here. Now, if you want to stay here without the wall, go ahead and begin to find your own space. For those of you that are coming to a wall, Vipri Karani. So you start with one side of your body at the wall. And there's no real graceful way to come up. You're swinging one leg and then the other, bringing the legs, just like it says, right at the wall. Now, if your hamstrings are a little bit tight, you can certainly walk yourself further away from your mat if you need, away from the wall if you need to or you can bring the sit bones nice and close. 
Other ways to do this or are folding a blanket underneath the sit bones or bringing a bolster right up to the wall. So again, several different variations and ways that you can come into this practice. So if you are familiar, you can go ahead and add those creature comforts that you need to come into this pose. So taking a moment here, allow the eyes to soften and close, and we come back to the breath. Letting the breath begin to slow and deepen. So the Kriya Karani is really a beautiful pose for balancing both high and low blood pressure. If you're having a day that's been very busy and hectic, if you just take a moment and bring the legs up the wall, it can begin to bring the blood pressure into balance. It begins to calm the mind and calm the body and bring you right back to center. So another nice way you can just find that space in your body and your mind, just to relax. As you come back to the breath, I want you to breathe, I want you to wiggle through the toes and then begin to breathe the toes all the way down through the legs. Pause at the tailbone and then direct the breath all the way through the torso and out through the crown of the head. I'm going to begin to move through a counting breath. As you inhale, begin to follow how many seconds it takes to, to draw the breath upward till you reach your peak of inhalation. So maybe it's one, two, three, four, maybe five. Pause. And then five, four, three, two, one. Again, inhale. One, two, three, four, five, maybe six. And six, five, four, three, two, one. Again, inhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, and six, five, four, three, two, one. So as you take a moment here for reflection, come back to your intention. The mind is moving to stillness, breath and body, Slows, the breath slows and deepens. And with every inhale, moving deeper and deeper and deeper into a state of restfulness, of receptivity, of relaxation. And as you release the breath, letting go of that last little bit of anything that no longer serves you. Take a nice inhale and release it out. Good. Do that a few more times, just really letting everything release. Let it all go. There's no reason to carry that around. Just let it go. Let, allow yourself to feel lighter and lighter and lighter with every exhale. Once you come to your last beautiful breath here, take a nice inhale, and as you exhale, settle into your Shavasana. Know that you have arrived in the most beautiful, perfect place of existence, Shavasana. You can stay here for as long as you need to, and then when you're ready to come out, you can certainly just begin to bring yourself out Take a nice yawny stretch and begin to come back into your day. So this was your Monday morning. Deep stretch, mild fast release. From my heart to yours, yogis. Namaste.